Just because yeah. you have a rough start, which most international students do, doesn't mean your ending won't be good. Your chance of getting admitted into SMU, into telecom program will be very high. Hey friends, welcome to the Chang Coaching. Rob here. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a very unique master's degree in America. It's the Master's of Science in Telecommunication at Network Engineering. Jay here recently graduated from it and he's going to tell you about this really unique but really interesting opportunity to study here in America if you've got this special background. So grab some chai and join us in this video. All right, friends, thanks for tuning in. Um, Jay, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Uh, hello, uh, welcome, my friends. Uh, my name is Jay Shah. I'm originally from Mumbai, India. I did my bachelor's in electronics engineering from KJ Somaya Institute of Engineering and Information Technology, which is in Sion, uh, Mumbai. Uh, which comes under University of Mumbai. After uh, completing my undergraduate, I worked for a company called Reliance Geo as a network support engineer. I did my internship over there. Mm -hmm. Currently, uh, I graduated from uh, SMU uh, in December 2018 um, with a master's degree. And currently, I'm working for a company called Cyber Group as a DevOps consultant. I'm also a lecturer at SMU. I'm teaching network automation uh, this spring semester. So a lot of engagements over here in Dallas. Yeah, Jay's got quite the background in continuing to build his resume and qualifications, but he recently, uh, about a year ago now, yeah. uh, graduated from Southern Methodist University doing a master's in telecommunication and network engineering. And they're about to change the name of that, right? Previously it was master's of science in telecommunication and network engineering. Now from fall 2020, it will be like, the name will be changed to master of science in network engineering. And so the program comes under like electrical engineering mm -hmm. and uh, which are, with a major in network engineering. Okay. okay, so this is more for people with a background or who want to pursue a field in relationship with electrical engineering? Uh, good question, and it is a like, uh, very confusing. Okay, know? clarify. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's nothing to do with electrical engineering. Nothing to do. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, the program comes under electrical engineering, but it's not, none of the courses are of electrical. Okay, so, so it's in that department, but something different? Something different, okay. yeah. It's basically for people who want to pursue like network engineering, telecommunications, go into cloud, wireless, advanced degrees, as a architectural mm -hmm. infrastructure, as a consultant's management, uh, so it's like broad, like advanced telecommunication degree, you can say okay. that in that way. So before we get into mm -hmm. the industry and mm -hmm. the job scope, yeah. and if people want to decide this is a good career path or not in America, talk about your background yeah, sure. and what led you wanting to pursue this in mm -hmm. America. During my final year of uh, bachelor's degree, uh, I was started preparing for my uh, master's studies, mm -hmm. and I wanted to go to United States. So as all the you fellow uh, aspirants, um, I approached a lot of resources, talked to my friends, relatives in the United States, alumni, seniors who were studying, mm -hmm. and got a lot of information. So since my bachelor was, was in electronics engineering, uh, and I've worked as, in a, like a telecommunication mm -hmm. uh, industry, uh, so I wanted to do like something most focused towards like telecom, which is like kind of like half computer science, half programming, and more of the communication. So I chose this program, and based on my interest and research, I shortlisted like bunch of you know, other universities. So with SMU, I also uh, applied to University of Colorado Boulder, University of Maryland, College Park, and Murray State University. So based on that, uh, I found telecommunication program in SMU is a good one. One of the reason is uh, SMU. Uh, doesn't require GRE for telecommunication network engineering program. Now it does, but the scores are not that much needed, like compared to other universities. You don't need a top score to get in. Yeah, you, you don't exactly. You don't need a top score. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have done like, uh, if you are from te electronics and telecommunication degree or electronics or IT, and if you have done like CCNA uh, certifications exams or given other telecom. Mm -hmm exams, uh, you, your chances of getting admit into SMU, into telecom program will be very high because your path is like aligned to what the school needs over here. So they've already got some background and experience yes, in that. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I think you told me that at SMU, telecommunication is one of the top majors for international students, yes, right? That's, that's correct, yeah. Why is that? First of all, like there are very less universities in USA which have like a core telecommunication. Mm. There are other universities which is like aligned to management. For instance, if you go to Murray State University, mm -hmm. uh, which is in Kentucky, it mm -hmm. has like a telecommunication system management. So it is more like half business, half half engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same with University of Maryland College Park. It is half business, half engineering. Okay. Only like for SMU Telecom, it is pure like advanced networking. It's like 
uh, it's not aligned to business. business. Okay. Yeah. So pure techie. Pure tech. It's <laughs> pure techie. It's if you want to take like other courses, you definitely can do it. So there are like total ten courses mm -hmm. you have to take in your degree plan, out of which uh, three are mandatory. Uh, once and you can choose the rest seven as electives and can be of like other uh, departments and out of seven three can be of other departments basically from computer science or if you want something from electrical engineering something from management mm -hmm. like data analytics or like programming or like or program management you can take that as well so what's kind of the culture and coursework of this degree and program yes so i chose smu and especially Lyle school of engineering for three main reasons i mm -hmm. like the coursework i like the campus i like the culture mm -hmm. So SME is a very old university. It's almost like came in like 1910. Okay. Yeah. So it's most more than like a one century old. Mm -hmm. And beautiful it's a, campus. Beautiful campus. It's in proper downtown Dallas. It's proper in city. You have a lot of international population. And the Cox School of Business is very popular. Mm -hmm. Very good uh, program. It's uh, it, it ranks like in top five universities in the United States. Especially the coursework which is designed in telecom is it's very precise and. Uh, what is required in the industry these days mm -hmm. and it's updated like every year every it's updated periodically basically. so since i did my uh, bachelor's as an uh, electronics engineer and had a little bit of experience in telecom industry i kind of knew which courses i need to take mm -hmm. i definitely uh, took advice from my program director seniors and everyone the program director uh, dr scott kingsley uh, he's the lead in he's the main one in the telecom uh, program uh, mm -hmm. at SMU. He will be your advisor, he will guide you and he's a good friend. He has visited a couple of times to India mm -hmm. uh, for the recruiting sessions and everything. In my third semester, I uh, wrote like a couple of technical research papers. Mm -hmm. I went to... You got uh, published. It got published. Uh, I went to a conference called Information and Telecommunication Education Research Association, which was in uh, March 2018. Uh, it was held uh, near to Murray State University in mm -hmm. Lexington, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So I went with my professor and uh, not all, apart from my university, there were other like 15 other universities, including uh, Ivy, Ivy League colleges like C. Boulder, Purdue University. And so where it gave me like more good networking connections and updated my skills. And during my summer, I tried looking for internships, but I, I didn't got an intern. I did a voluntary intern with a company called Cyber Defense Labs, which is based in Richardson. Mm -hmm. uh, so real quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, just talk briefly, mm. what made you choose to do a volunteer and non-paid internship uh, versus, you know, a paid one? That's a good question. Like uh, all other students, uh, I, I, I was getting interview calls for my internships um, in various companies. And uh, this uh, Cyber Defense Labs, I did uh, like a small project, mm -hmm. uh, which I got it late, like after the school started. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was already uh, doing on-campus jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't want it to do leave that one as well. So I tried mm. to balance and I did a volunteer work. And since it was like local to Dallas. Kind of a part time. Uh, uh, kind of part time. And it mm -hmm. was, and I tried to do like a small project within like 12 weeks of okay. time frame. So you went for the experience? Yes, I just went for my experience. It was just not monetary. Resume uh, building. And yeah, building networking skills, learning new, uh, updating my skills a bit like technical or communication and was it worth it it was worth it yeah mm. yep, it was worth it it was like, you know just so quick tip if you don't get an internship uh and if you want if you want to do a volunteer internship do that it's, like, a, good, it, it's a good backup option it's a good backup option um though it's unpaid i think you should do it because uh it will help you uh, in building your skills uh it's not always like monetary or course related, but uh, it will build your connections. You will learn like new things. Uh, it will be helpful in, in your career path. Yeah, it could open your door up to something else. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, and in my summer uh, 2018, mm -hmm. I got an opportunity to develop a new course. Yeah, the course name was like DevOps on Networking. Uh, me and my colleague uh, developed a course in the entire like uh, 16 weeks of frame. Mm -hmm. And the course was pretty new and none of the universities have that course. Uh, it's definitely there in computer science, but as a telecom network engineer, if you want to do this, update your skills, go towards cloud, or, and DevOps is basically like you're half developer, half operations engineer kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we developed a new course, and I was also appointed a, a teaching assistant, mm -hmm. and I also got a scholarship in my last semester. Oh, so, well done, sure. Yep, thank you. And so it was a very hectic course. I never imagined that I will be appointed as a teaching assistant. Jay, so now that you're working, you've made that transition from being a student to professional. 
how is the industry, how is the job scope? People always wondered, can I get a good job? Mm -hmm. How would you answer that? The telecommunication network engineering program is not only like pure telecom. If you want, if you're like an optical fiber or like a pure telco industry, it's more like advanced degrees. If you, so there are like certain uh, degree paths. If you want to be a telecom engineer, network engineer, wireless engineer, if you want to go into cloud, if you want to go into DevOps, if you want to go into like project management. So, or if you want to go into security, mm -hmm. so you can choose like various tracks mm -hmm. based on your interest uh, and based on your professor's advices uh, and which projects you are doing that. So you can choose various fields in that. So I've been hearing Jay's story and one I think is important, America is not easy. Yeah. It's a struggle. We made another video with Jay about yeah. how he had his visa interview rejected twice. Yeah at the consulate in India before he got accepted the third time. Yeah. So he had to fight just to get the visa to come. And then he didn't get an internship. Yeah. He took a voluntary one. But by the end of his course, yeah. he's developing a class. Yeah. He is getting a scholarship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets a good job. And now he's actually even teaching part-time at the university as well, yes. speaking at lots of conferences. Uh -huh. So just because yeah. you have a rough start, which most international students do, doesn't mean your ending won't be good. Exactly. That's so Jay's a great normal example yeah, yeah. of what this international student journey is like in America. Um, it's not always easy from the beginning, mm -hmm. but if you work hard, if you're patient, yeah. you make some mistakes, then it sets you up for success later on. And yeah. I love how Jay's story shows that. Yep. My start was really bad, but things worked out. Uh, I was also uh, like interacting with like tons of graduate uh, students across the globe uh, to get for like since I was working in the uh, international admission office. So I also went to Indoor, Madhya Pradesh and mm -hmm. represented SMU in December 2017 for like uh, as a recruitment event. Mm -hmm. So got a lot of opportunities in SMU, uh, in life school of engineering. And after I graduated, I didn't got a job. So as soon as I graduated, uh, I got a phone call. I didn't apply. It was, I was just so much active on LinkedIn and attended like a lot of conferences. So things worked out. Uh, Mm -hmm. And currently, right now, I'm working in a company called Cyber Group as a DevOps consultant. And with that, I'm also uh, assisting my assisting my professor, Dr. Scott Kingsley, uh, in network automation uh, course. So during weekends, take like a video recording class for one of this course. And I'm cu currently heavily involved in SMU, uh, assisting a lot of uh, prospective candidates, uh, various international students in, in Dallas. So if you guys like. I have interest like in pursuing masters in telecommunication network engineering. Do reach out to me. Um, I'm like heavily involved, I, and I can give you like advices. So our chai question for this video is: What degree do you want to pursue here in America? Which degree are you considering? Which degrees are you applying for? Let us know in the comments. It'd be fun to see which other degrees. See if you're considering like a telecom or network engineering or something like Jay, yeah. or maybe something different. Yes. But maybe you'll find someone else and connect with someone who's pursuing something interesting. You guys can help each other out. So Jay, you've given lots of great information. Mm -hmm. Any other final thoughts or tips you want to give to people who are considering this field or this kind of degree? Uh, so for uh, those who are like watching this video, uh, if you're considering like telecommunication, network engineering, first and foremost is do your research. Like, ask yourself your undergraduate faculties members, your friends, uh, go to the university websites, they have like tons of information, read a lo lot of white papers. And if you're, once this is done and if you're applying, I would suggest like definitely do some like certification exams like CCNA, uh, Juniper, uh, AWS exams, which will be helpful uh, to get admitted like faster and all the certifications are valid for like two to three years. So that will be useful for our entire course program. And with that, uh, I will also suggest, you know, try to read and uh, write like research papers because that that is a, like a bloom your career. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, do reach out to me uh, on Facebook or LinkedIn. I'll definitely uh, advise and uh, guide you. And apart from that, uh, do watch Rob Adams uh, mm -hmm. Giant Coaching videos. He has like tons of other informations and uh, I'm doing like a couple of other videos with him. 
So stay tuned. Awesome, yeah. And if this video has been helpful, give it a big thumbs up and like to say thanks to Jay and his story, his journey, and hopefully it helps you guys making that big decision on what to study here in America, what jobs to pursue. And yeah, let's connect on Chai and Coaching. Don't forget to subscribe so we can get more helpful videos to you guys to help you succeed here in America on your journey cross-culturally. Yes. And connect online as well. We'll have links in the description mm -hmm. where you can connect more with Chai and Coaching or Jay. Yeah. We want to be a resource for you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Rob.